Good morning. It is February 9th, 2021. Start over. Good morning. It is February 9th, 2023, 8.15 a.m. I'm skipping years here, going back in time. Um, this is episode 2000. We have reached the milestone of 2000 YouTube videos, boys and girls. And you know what? This did kind of sneak up on me. Even when we were going through the 1990s of them, I just really wasn't thinking about 2000. I just was, I wasn't thinking about the milestone. Uh, but we're here and uh wow 2000 and i think the biggest question about doing 2000 videos is why do i keep doing it whenever my subscribers i have 926 subscribers i still don't have 1000 i'm still not making money from this why am i still making all these videos every day when i don't make money i don't know i don't know once i, I started it and i just felt like i needed to keep doing it it wasn't like the animations because the animations was a lot more work and then after like I did a bunch of them running up to during COVID, that could be another reason I did it during COVID because, and then it's just like, this is so much work without any payoff. Um, I mean, the payoff here though, is that people are commenting every day. So that keeps me coming back. So thank you, Sasha and Rob Cortino, everybody else who was commenting. But uh, the animation is just like, if people got off on them for one day and then it was just done. Occasionally one pops up and somebody goes, look what Clay did two years ago. And that's really cool. But this is just consistent, so I keep doing it, even though it doesn't make any money. Uh, hopefully it does at some point. At, actually, you need a 1,000 subscribers for it to make money and then um, to monetize it. And and after I get like the next 74 subscribers and I can monetize it, I got to figure out how to monetize it. Because YouTube doesn't make it easy. It, it, it doesn't. Because uh, I looked into it when I first started this stuff. I was like, that's hard. But I'll worry about it when I get there. And that was like, what, five, six years ago? Anyway... Kids, this batch of roughs is a long one. Uh, this this video is a long one. Uh, what I did was, um, I I drew like ten roughs one week, and then the next week, but, but there's still some ideas in, in that batch that I thought I wanted to do. So what am I gonna do? Just do like a uh, do a vlog of just five? Yeah, I could do that. I've done that before, but then I thought, you know, let me just wait till next week and I just combine them. And I think that worked out really well for the vlog. Um, and there's a bunch of that one too that I wanted to use that or that I was under consideration anyway. And then uh, it, I combined them together and I used a bunch of them, but uh, it makes for a long video. So I apologize for that. But hey, the long video is episode 2000. So that's pretty cool. Um, so Robert Coutinho wants to know what I put in a half pot of coffee I talked about yesterday. I don't know. I didn't sound more spastic than usual, did I? Um, and uh, you know what I put in a half pot of coffee? Coffee. Um, and Sasha said, when you get to this, grats on episode 2000. See, Sasha's the only one who was looking ahead, you know? But speaking of coffee, excuse me while I take a sip. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> so, um, a lot of these were done, in these roughs. Uh, a lot of these were not. And as usual with the batch roughs, there were good ones and there were bad ones. And, and half the time, there's somebody saying, my favorite was one that you didn't even want to do. Uh, so, they didn't even get, really consider. So... And a lot of these seems like a long time ago because it was like two weeks. And in political cartooning, two weeks can be a long time. A lot of cartoons and shit. So, um, and we covered a lot of stuff. I mean, we, we came from a, from a mass shooting, you know, during that time. Uh, I did this Groundhog idea. See, that's long, long ago. Last week was Groundhog's Day. And uh, I did this idea, and then I saw that Joe Heller did pretty much the same thing. So I let it go, and I sent it to Joe. I said, look here, buddy. You, you stole my idea before I could even think of it. You know, Joe's a good friend. And and I think the Washington Post ran his. And then like four or five days later, Gary Varro did the same cartoon. So he probably saw that Joe did it and said, oh, I like that. And took, you know what? I don't. I want to say he didn't steal it. Let's, let's go with that because I don't have any proof that he stole it. But when you do it five days later, people, cartoonists, it, it doesn't look good because you have plenty of time to know that it was out there. You had plenty of time to run across it, you know? So, so, so it's hard to say that I didn't see that unless you just don't ever, ever look at other political cartoons, which is what another cartoonist once told me. He says, I never look at other cartoons. And I don't believe that. I don't believe other cartoons are out there not looking at cartoons. Um, recently, I did this cartoon, and a cartoonist who I like very much did the same thing. I don't even remember which one it was now, but, but he did it like three or four days later. And I did not believe that he stole it from me because this guy didn't steal, and he's also a friend. But what really disappointed me, I thought, was that he hadn't seen my cartoon. <laughs> I was like, come on, dude, he had like three or four days. How, are you not reading my work? And that's the, the only thing that bugged me. 
because uh, I'd never would have would accuse that one individual of stealing a cartoon. Uh, and somebody even on, on Go Comics had commented, you know, like Clay did this already to him, but uh, I don't know if he saw that. Whatever. I mean, if he's not reading other people's cartoons, maybe he's not reading his comments. He knows. Who knows? I didn't comment on though, because I didn't want to. I, I didn't want anything to come off like I was accusing him of stealing, because I, I know he did not do that. So more coffee time. This one right here with Mike Lindell. This was the the one that I did. That I didn't think I'd do, but uh, I drew this the official cartoon for this on the wedding day. I did, did it last Sunday, and it's been sitting here for two weeks. Um, but I thought I gotta crank something out, get ready for this wedding by eleven, and uh, I gotta put on my suit, I gotta take a shower, I gotta sh shave with a shitty hotel razor. Can't really travel with a razor if you don't check your bags. Uh, I mean, uh, this is an electric razor. You can't hijack a plane with an electric razor. But anyway, I did the Mike Lindell one. I thought this would be cute. It'll be funny for today. Uh, but I'm risking that it's, I'm going to do a cartoon that's not very good today. And uh, But no, people dug it. They were like, hey, like it. And they get a lot of shares. I don't know if I got any reprints but, or any any of my clients used it. But it was people on social media. They dug it. They laughed. A lot of them were afraid because they thought this isn't even satire at this point. This might actually happen. Robert Cortino might have written that. Maybe somebody else did. Um, somebody else did. Um, I use the, I use this one right here for the preview image or for the preview cartoon when I uh, created the blog yesterday because it was like one of the few that I liked that I hadn't used in a real cartoon. And usually when I post the blog, the roughs, or the, blo the blog of the roughs, sorry, people just woke up. Um, I like to use a cartoon that I hadn't used, you know, uh, for the image for people to click and see. So I, I'm still, I just woke up and I'm still like brain fog, um, and giggles just still giggling i think she just stopped uh you, you i've heard you about my neighbor giggles she giggled all flipping night i went to bed before midnight she was giggling i woke up at 3 a.m she was giggling uh and yeah goodbye video long enough